indeed. Oh, my goodness. On behalf of your family here at United Baptist Church in Topsom, Maine, we want to wish each and every one of you a glorious Easter Sunday. Now, I know 
those of you that are listening on the radio, we're a week late. That's just the way our schedule is. Our, our broadcasts are always a week behind, but uh, uh, it is what it is. And uh, we hope you had a glorious Easter holiday last weekend. Now, if you are watching on our website, ubctopsum.org, welcome. Uh, the uh, uh, service should still be right on time for you guys. <laughs> but welcome, welcome, welcome to the wonderful service this morning. And uh, uh, I just wanted to let you know that uh, this morning's message is going to be a little different than our, our normal schedule or how we usually uh, present uh, our, our messages on Sunday mornings. Uh, because I got to thinking the other day, and uh, you know, we celebrated Christmas here just a couple of months ago. And so much of, of our Christmas uh, celebration is wrapped around the reading of the Christmas event from the Bible. And some reason for somehow, whatever it is, for Easter, we don't do that quite as much. So I thought this morning we would uh, take a look at the scriptures that, that point to and, and encompass the uh, Easter event itself. Now, we'll be reading from all four Gospels. Uh, we'll, we'll also be looking at four different areas of, of the Easter story. The, the first one will be the God's plan. The second one will be the cross, the third, the tomb, and the fourth, the resurrection. So we'll be, be ready. We're going to be uh, reading scripture and uh, listening for God's message to, to us through his word. Let's pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, again, I thank you for this glorious day and the celebration of Jesus raising from the dead. Father, he always had that power ever since he, he came to earth, but he displayed it for everyone to see on that first Easter resurrection day. Father, it makes such a difference in our Christian lives. It is that hinge key of, of the belief that we have in Jesus. Thank you for this event. Thank you that it displays your love for us. Thank you for what it means to each of us as individuals. Lord, I would just pray here and now that you would take the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and you would make them acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We're going to start off with the plan. God didn't do this in a vacuum. It, it didn't come as all of a sudden this idea pops into God's head. Hey, let's do it this way or something like that. No, no. This has always been part of what God had planned to do. And we kind of get a snapshot of that plan here as we take a look in the Gospel of John. John chapter 1, we're just going to take uh, uh, some scriptures there in John chapter, the first chapter of John. And we read, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true life that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, 
children born not of natural descent or of a human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Out of His fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son who is Himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father who has made Him known. God's plan outlined there so distinctly in that first chapter of John. And as we approach our Easter celebration, we have the cross. And the, in the, from the cross, our scripture will take excerpts from the Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter 15. And we read, Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a shaft and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. And with a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the son of God. We go from the cross to the tomb. And for our scripture for the tomb, we read from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, starting at verse 50. Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man who had not consented to their decision and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb cut into the rock, one in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices, spices and perfumes. But they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. And then from the tomb on that third day, the resurrection, taken from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 28. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, 
For I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said, Go, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Our message this morning. <laughs> Surprises. Surprises. There are some things that we don't mind being surprised at, right? I mean, surprise birthday parties. Yes. Surprise gifts. Money in the mail, that $20 bill that we find in our coat pocket after a long season. <laughs> and then there are those other things that may not be quite as good, for we, we would rather not be surprised, right? Uh, those things like our car not starting in the morning, right? Or a flooded basement after a storm. Or even a police with a radar that was pointing right, as, right at us just as we're running late to an appointment. Oh, makes our heart stop, right? <laughs> well, and then there are those things that can go either way, all right? Like, what is in that butter container in the back of the refrigerator? <laughs> is it butter? Or, or maybe a saved piece of carrot cake? or maybe even leftovers from last week's uh, dinner. But then as we look, maybe last week's dinner could be something that uh, could be used as a science experiment, <laughs> looking at how many different colors mold can be. <laughs> but we won't know until we open it. Oh my goodness. We come together here on this Sunday, our celebration of Easter, our celebration that Jesus raised from the dead, conquering sin and death forever. <laughs> we have just come through what we call Holy Week, the week that we remember the dark times of Jesus' last week on this earth, the betrayal the arrest, the trials, the verdict. Then this morning we read about the cross, the death, and the burial. We remember that he was buried, and on that morning of that third day, something happened. Something that had never happened before, and something that has never happened since. The Gospels tell us this way. In Matthew 28, 2, we, we read, There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. The Gospel of Mark 16, chapter 16, verse 4, But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. And Luke Chapter 24, verse 2, they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And then in John, the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verse 1, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. That stone that covered the entrance of the tomb of Jesus had been rolled away. Why? Why was that stone rolled away? <laughs> We've been looking this past Lenten season on the why questions 
Uh, two weeks ago, just two weeks ago, we looked at the event of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. And we remember that when Jesus arrived at the grave, he told the people there to roll the stone away. And we took a look at there was two reasons for that. One was that there are times that Jesus asks us to do something to show our belief in him before he does his miracle. And the second reason was, of course, to let Lazarus out of the grave. But here this morning, as we celebrate Jesus' resurrection, I want us to consider that stone was not rolled away to let Jesus out. It was not rolled away. I'll, I'll say it again. It was not rolled away to let Jesus out. The stone was rolled away so that we could go in and see that he is not there. <laughs> At the angel's own request, to the women, come and see. The two Marys entered into an empty tomb. <laughs> when Peter and John ran to the grave, they too entered in and found nothing but grave clothes. Even today, I am told that if you happen to be on a promised land, uh, uh, holy land tour, and they, they have a stop at a graveyard, and there's a grave there that that they say it is a replica of the one that Jesus was laid in. Why would it be just a replica? Because we don't know for sure. <laughs> because he's not there. He is not there. Folks, we can go to the grave of Muhammad. We know that it's his grave because he is there. We can go to the tomb of Confucius. He's still there. We can go to where they have laid John Smith. He is still there. But we cannot. We cannot go to the tomb of Jesus Christ because that stone was rolled away and we have eyewitness accounts that went into that very place where they laid him and he is not there. He is alive. <laughs> we have eyewitnesses that have recorded, been recorded as seeing him alive. His resurrection that we celebrate today gives each and every one of us the hope that those of us who believe in him, we too will be raised again and will forever be with him in the perfection of heaven. Today, today we can see, we believe, and it did not end there with Jesus' death, nor even with his resurrection, because we know the story is not over. We take a look at Revelation, the book of Revelation, in excerpts from uh, chapter 22. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and His servants will serve Him. They will see His face, and His name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. 
I, Jesus, have spent, sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. Let the one who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty come. And let the one who wishes to take the free gift of the water of life come. I warn everyone who hears the words of this prophecy of this scroll, if anyone adds anything to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in this scroll. And if anyone takes words away from this scroll of prophecy, God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this scroll. He who testifies to these things says, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. Not only did Jesus live for us, not only did he die for us, not only did he rise again for us, not only did he ascend to heaven for us, he is coming back again for us. What a joyous day to look forward to. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, here we stand. Here we are on this Easter Sunday, remembering what you have done for each and every one of us. Because you have raised from the dead we will be raised also up and to be forever in your presence. Lord, thank you for that promise. Thank you for doing what needed to be done for each of us. We couldn't have done it ourselves, but you did it for us. Thank you, Father. And gracious God, we come before you now, not only with our heart and our minds, but Lord, on this Easter Sunday morning, we want to lift our voices together in one voice to you as we pray to you that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.